Next, we have Randy Visser with Cablecast TV. Randy, are you here? I am. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, everyone. Awesome. Thanks. Hi. Good morning. Great to join you all. I've been with you all morning. It's been a very successful virtual conference so far, I would say. Mary? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is, I've been doing a number of these, yeah. Uh, did a great one in the state of Vermont <clears throat> last month, and they had 57 participants on the screen. You should have seen it. It was like Jeopardy. You know, you had all the, the rows of people. It was really interesting, uh, and it's been interesting for me to see how we can connect with people over these uh, Zoom meetings and conferences and things. It's a uh, very interesting times, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I'm... Uh, I'm in Maine where I live and uh, participate uh, in our state organization, Community Television Association of Maine. Um, I'm just sending greetings to y'all from our organization and uh, just wanted to remind you that you're going to hear a lot more about what's happening. We're in the middle of a really interesting battle with NCTA. Our state uh, organization was able to pass legislation this past year. Uh, that forced the cable company to provide HD channels uh, to our local cable um, peg access channels, as well as keep us on the lowest tiers of the systems. And they appealed it. They lost it in the state court, and now it's in the federal courts. Uh, we understand it's going to be tried in October. Uh, if you're involved, if you're uh, getting feeds from the ACM uh, website, Mike's been posting updates on this. And we are very, very, um, how shall I put it, um, confident, I think, that uh, we're going to survive the next round, and this will become a national precedence uh, in, in the legal system soon. And uh, that's an interesting, that's a very interesting development, yeah. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to put up my, this is my email address, and uh, I just punched it into the chat window and I also want to just quickly punch up uh, the uh, website for uh, cablecast uh, TV and uh, I'm gonna share my screen and uh, off we go there we go can everyone see that okay looking good cool um so I know you've been listening to a lot of presentations this morning um, and uh, that's all good, good, good material, as I said earlier. Uh, what I wanted to do was talk a little about our unique abilities to take your uh, content and distribute it to a whole bunch of different platforms at one, with the push of one button. Uh, it is a pitch, but it's also something that is really uh, important to what we're all trying to do these days. I'm just going to bring this graphic up as a means of sort of making, uh, stating the obvious that we're all now dealing with the abilities to take uh, streams of content that are being produced and pushed over the internet. Uh, and we're obviously also interested in taking our content and pushing that out to p places where people are watching television. And, uh, you know, this, this kind of graphic uh, flowchart that you're seeing on your screen now is the kind of thing that we're all dealing with. There, there are new sources coming in, our abilities to take feeds using um, some of the streaming technology, RTP, RTMP feeds uh, over the uh, networks um, have suddenly, I, I think this has really happened within the past couple of years. I've been in, involved in this work for 40 years. And, and honestly, the last few years have been some of the most interesting developments I've seen as, a, as an engineer, technically, in, uh, in this marketplace, if you will, uh, for many, many years. Um, and obviously, it's, a, it's an issue that comes back to what you use as a base playout system. What is the, the heart of, of your distribution systems? Uh, Cablecast under the banner of Tightrope is one of those systems. We've obviously been around for a long time. 
um, a number of uh, customers and, and folks who are involved in this um, organization and are at this meeting today uh, use our use our systems um, and as you can see uh, we're we're working with a new set of uh, servers called VIO or VIO as we call it and um, I'll just go ahead and minimize this screen again move got all these little gooey things to move around on the screen here. Um, I wanted to punch up this uh, particular tab. I don't know if Lisa Wolf is still with us, um, but um, I thought I would just quickly show you uh, the public site that uh, Columbus, Wisconsin is using for their content. This, uh, what you're seeing on the screen is a portal that is provided by Cablecast. And essentially, uh, her system is taking in content either as IP streams from Town Hall, as you can see, or from any site literally out in the community that has access to the internet. They can push those IP streams directly into, into their server uh, and or take base band video through a router, put it into the uh, server system and make it available through the cable feeds and then over to these new platforms that people are watching television on. The most obvious is the one we all have in front of us, it's a computer or any place that you can get access to uh, the internet. Uh, you, could use your, you could use your iPhone and dial up a website and What's important, we think, is the ability for customers to be able to get at this content easily and to have it uh, easy to find content. And then when they push a button to watch something, it works every time. For example, on uh, the Columbus website here for their video portal, if I click on the watch button, I can push the play button and we can see what's being played on the Columbus, Wisconsin the cable channel uh, at the same time. This is a stream then that's coming through our reflex service. Uh, okay, uh, I've pulled up a little line diagram that just shows you the big picture of how our systems work. And essentially what we're looking at is Lisa has a system where she's pulling the content in, and then when she has a show that she wants to make available on this website, on this public portal, she just clicks a button in the menu. I'm gonna go right over to our server here a minute. This is actually a server that I'm logged into in Minneapolis. Again, I'm in Maine, so it's a good way to demonstrate that this whole system is all remote operation. We have uh, submenus on our, on our uh, system and each show that is brought into the system is given a unique ID and there's a lot of metadata that you can add to these shows that become uh, part of search engines and your ability to find content easily, keep track of the content, you can add your custom fields, all these kinds of things. But what I wanted to show you is at the bottom is a little button that says VOD enabled. When Lisa clicks that button for a new show, I'm not gonna actually do it here um, at the moment, but um, what happens is her, whoops, those shows get immediately pushed over to this portal, to this website. And this website, this portal is something that shows up as a big button on the town of Columbus's website, town's website. You push the button, boom, you're right here. You can see all of the content that you may be interested in watching, whether it's the live feed that I just demonstrated by clicking on this button, or it could be content that has been saved, just as I demonstrated with one push of a button, this show, Faith Lutheran Church Service, gets pushed immediately over to, uh, to this uh, website. 
and you can then watch it in high definition. The other cool thing about this path of distribution is, as you can see from this graphic, once the uh, customer, uh, Columbus, is using this cloud service to push that content over to the website, it's also pushed over to Apple TV, Roku, and soon we'll be um, adding Fire Stick to, uh, to the mix. So if you are interested, if you have a Roku uh, uh, enabled television, maybe a smart TV, um, have some fun, do a search for Columbus, Wisconsin. You should see uh, what we call a white label app that we developed for that town. And uh, you can click on that, download it, and you're gonna see all of this same content that's being pushed over to the website is being pushed over to Apple TV, Roku at the same time. I do have a screenshot here on a tab off our website that just shows you what this looks like on Apple TV player. And essentially you get to a, a landing page like this, and then you have buttons where you can click uh, to watch the live streams from, uh, that are being fed to the cable channels and back over to the websites. These are now available on these over the top apps as well. And then you can see that there are galleries of VOD content that are available underneath this. This is, this is the screen weave app. Uh, feel free to download this when you're playing with Apple TV or Roku at home, and you'll see hundreds of uh, our customers who are using this. This is a free service that we provide our customers. And I'm gonna say that again, this is a free service. We are able to take customers who are utilizing the live and the VOD features of our system push those over to these over-the-top platforms at no additional cost. In the case of Columbus, they also had us develop a white label custom app. So in this case, you can search for Columbus, Wisconsin on those same apps, and you'll see their specific app. When you download that, it'll open up on their custom page, and you'll be able to watch their content on those over-the-top platforms. So again, as you can see, uh, we have a lot of interesting, uh, you know, solutions for helping you get your content both into these servers and then again out to the platforms that people are now watching television. And this is, a, in, my, in my humble opinion, a very big deal uh, with how we're connecting our communities. I mentioned that I live in Maine and I live in a, a little town of Gray, Maine. We're just replacing our old, old uh, server with a new Cablecast server. And um, as we started to engage our community in watching streams, we're gonna be adding the VOD soon. Um, we found that so many more people were suddenly watching the local meetings again. Our, uh, my neighbor's one of the town counselors and she told me, Within a week after we initiated this, this started to happen. And I hear this from my customers all the time. I'm assuming if you talk to Lisa, she'll also tell you that there's a lot of good engagement. In fact, we just were texting with each other a little bit this morning here in the meeting, and she said they've been getting great feedback from people who are watching their programming now on Apple TV, Roku, off their website, and again, uh, on their cable TV uh, service. Um, another thing I just wanted to point out here, because I know um, this, is, this is the kind of thing that really does become a, um, it's a feature in a system like Cablecast, but in the end, it's more about somebody who's interested in watching content, a uh, longer form content, for example. I'm gonna come over here and click on the town of uh, Bedford, New Hampshire. This is their public site. And when I click on one of the VOD sample uh, videos from their site, you can see that uh, this is one of their council meetings from September, I happen to click on it. You can see, you can watch the video here in high definition, but you also have the ability here to jump right to points within the meeting that have been pre-indexed. 
And this gives you the ability to jump right to, um, you know, a particular part of a show that you may want to watch. Really important when you're working with longer form content like uh, town meetings, uh, sporting events, this kind of thing. All of that can be indexed in real time. Let me just show you. I'll go back. This again is the server that I'm logged into. Uh, so I can go to a submenu that's called um, Internet Video, and I can click on Video on Demand, and I can see the file that we've saved and that we're pushing back to our uh, website. All I need to do is just scrub to the point in this video that I want. I'm going to have to move this GUI back. And then I can add a chapter mark. And I can call this anything I want. We'll just call it test for the moment. I'll click OK. And you can see that now there's a new mark that's located at this point on the positioner. If I hit the retranscode button, that's going to take those marks and drop it right into. Well, I'll go back over to this. This is the uh, public site that we're using for our demo server. And you can see that um, all of these VOD content pieces are available for us to watch. If I add an index mark like I just did and hit that retranscode button, all of these files get up updated with those index marks. And when I open up one of these, I can see those marks. I don't know if I've actually got, uh, let's see here if I've got one. Well, sorry. I'm going to go back to Bedford here a minute. I, I think my uh, bandwidth is getting eaten up pretty quickly. This typically will open right up. I, I wanted to point out that part of the reason this is uh, a really a nice solution again is that uh, you know your ability to get content in front of people on a on a website has as much to do with people finding that content quickly and easily. And I think this public site is you know a great way for people to to see your content. They can see your schedule here. Uh, you know we can we can click into any of the shows that are currently playing. And we can also watch the stream live by pushing this button here. I'm going to take a real quick deep breath here a minute. I know everybody's been watching a lot of Zoom meetings. Um, I believe I've got till 1230. Is that right, Deb? It's a half hour presentation. Cool. Uh, how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm not seeing any of the uh, chat window at the moment, but feel free to break in at any time, folks. And engage me in questions. Um, I'm, I'm really uh, interested in showing you, again, some of the features of our system, but there's a lot going on here. I will just uh, take a minute to mention that um, I'm also involved in a really interesting workshop that Ross Rowe is going to be moderating tomorrow afternoon on streaming media in and out of these systems. And I'll get into more detail about some of these protocols, some of, the, some of the different ways that we can now move content from the field onto our systems and then out to where people are watching television, you know, with workflows that are very efficient and very, very easy to use, which is what- just, uh, I just wanted to mention, Randy, um, those of you that heard just a minute ago randy said that he's on till 12 30. it's 11 30 central time so just, just to clarify you. that you have and you have about 10 minutes randy too okay cool cool thank well, you um, uh yeah so i just wanted to again to make sure that uh people understood um that this is uh one of the uh solutions you could use to get content to a website I thought I'd just also show you a, a nice looking website from a customer of ours down in North Carolina. This is Dare County on the, uh, on the coast of North Carolina. 
they have a, a nice branded uh, community media program that they call Current TV. And this is their uh, logo. They've got a website here, currenttv.org. They utilize this uh, system. They use, utilize a cable cast system. And you can see that in this case, they've embedded their video directly onto their website. You see how quickly Hello, that popped Bob up? Bob Woodard, chairman of the Dare and County again, Board of Commissioners. I begin this is providing all these definition. video updates back and it all in March works. You can have a to bring you up to date with COVID-19 related at one time and it would work for everybody. Uh, if I go to their on demand tab here, and again, I show this often in my demos because I think this is a really nice solution for taking this beautiful, efficient workflow that we've designed into our system and land it on a custom site where you've embedded the code directly into a custom website. So the search engine that we saw over in uh, Columbus, up in this window, the, again, this is our public site solution. This is a website where they've embedded the code directly into their website. But it's a nice way to get your content up in front of your community. Here we have the galleries of content. So I can click on one of these and it's gonna open up as VOD content. And again, it needs to work every time. It's very, very important. It needs to work. It needs to be in high def. And then you can see that at the top, they've also got the live encoders on their system so that you can watch their channels in real time, just as they're pushing them over to their, uh, to their uh, cable channels. Looks like their government channel is using the bulletin board at the moment. But this is a nice solution, a nice way to get content over to these platforms. And keep in mind, just as Columbus is doing, Dare County is also doing this. If you were to go to Apple TV and Roku, download ScreenWeave, you'll see Dare County is one of the towns that utilize this free service. And people in Dare County can watch these feeds and this on-demand content on their Apple TV, Roku, and soon Fire Stick. Uh, platforms, and we're able to provide this to Dare County at no additional cost, which I think is a really big deal. And a lot of our customers are taking advantage of that. Let's see. Um, one other thing I wanted to put up on the screen a minute is that all of us have been dealing with uh, having to do these Zoom uh, or virtual meetings now. And we responded uh, immediately to the, to the COVID crisis by spinning up our developers. We have a very aggressive development team. Uh, they spun up what's called an RTMP cloud service. So this is one of the protocols that are being used for streaming media. Again, we'll be talking more about this in the workshop tomorrow afternoon that Ross Rowe is, is moderating. We'll have, I think, a really interesting discussion um, happening tomorrow. If you get a chance, please join us for that. But um, our solution is called uh, ScreenWeave Live. This is a service that you uh, purchase uh, by, the, by the year. We have a three month uh, trial that you can do for 300 bucks, um, just to give it a shot if you need to. If you're looking for a solution, all of your RTMP material, whether it's coming from a Zoom, vMix, um, or other sources, as you see here, are pushed over to a cloud service. And then we take those feeds and send them wherever you want. Send them to your YouTube uh, live stream, your Facebook uh, page, certainly back again to your Cablecast server uh, to be ingested, recorded, and distributed to all of these sites we just looked at, websites, Apple TV, Roku, wherever you need this to, to go. There are paths that have been already configured and built into your system so that you don't have to keep logging in and out. And this is one of the things we really feel strongly about. All of the development we do on these systems is really being driven by you folks, your feedback. And one of the things we heard early on in the development, uh, again, this software has been in development for 25 years or more, and we continue to improve it, 
But one of the big issues is workflow has to be very easy. And the other big thing is support has to be good. So we've really, really focused over the past three years, in particular on rebuilding our support. It is phenomenal. Talk to any of the customers in your organization that may be using this. I'm going to bet that they'll tell you the same thing. And what's really nice about all of the support is it's free. And it lasts as long as you're using our system. You simply put a ticket in, somebody gets immediately back to you, they can log into your server, analyze and resolve any issues you have. And that doesn't cost you anything. In other words, we're there for you. If you join our family, over a thousand users all over the country um, and growing rapidly, um, we're, we're really committed to working in the peg marketplace, if you will. We always have been. And um, some of our competitors are sort of moving into some of the new uh, markets, but we're really focused on trying to provide the peg access community with the kind of solutions you guys all need. Uh, and I'll, I guess I'll leave that as my last sort of note on this. Um, I do want to also mention that we have, uh, since the, the COVID uh, crisis has happened, we know that people are really struggling. Uh, we, we're no longer meeting in person at trade shows and so on. And so we're offering, uh, obviously, the ability to do demos. But we, we wanted to incentivize that a little bit. And if there are customers or, let me say, users, members in the Wisconsin Access Media Group that um, are uh, using another system and would like to learn more about Cablecast, please shoot me an email. And uh, if we're able to schedule a demo, a free demo, obviously, uh, we'll make a $100 contribution to your organization in your, in your organization's name. So uh, we've already done a number of these and hopefully we'll be able to, to provide uh, a Wisconsin uh, community media organization uh, with some uh, needed extra uh, boost from, you know, just giving um, us an opportunity to show you what we're doing with this cable cast system. So, um, it's been great. Again, I, I, I think you guys are doing a great job. Congratulations. This isn't easy to do. Um, I'll be back tomorrow and looking forward to working with Ross and others in that workshop. And please reach out. Um, we're here and we, we love working with customers. We're, our headquarters is just across the border in Minneapolis. We've got some great integrators that are working with people in Wisconsin. And I guess I'll leave it at that. Does anybody have questions? A lot going on here. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job, all of you guys. So um, a lot of information. Any final questions or anything? We have about a minute left for Randy. I don't know. Is Lisa still on? I am here, Randy. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Nice Hi. I, I didn't know if anybody had any specific questions for one of, you know, for a user, but Lisa has upgraded her system this past year. I think it was last, late last year, wasn't it? Actually, we're coming up on just a year now because I think we installed in November. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, but it's, um, you know, it's great to see you're using this uh, service and that uh, uh, you guys have the white label screen app on um, um, Apple TV and Roku. And uh, that's, that's a really cool thing. This is how people are going to be watching TV in, in the future. And you guys are ready for it. Thanks. Great. Yeah. See a lot of extra usage uh, just, just because of the features that this has. So thanks. We did just release 7.2, by the way, folks. And I should point this out. We now have full NDI uh, capabilities on these systems. And, and it's a great NDI um, uh, feature. Uh, we had a, a, a serious elite uh, TriCaster, new, new tech beta tester in the Boston market, really uh, run this through. Uh, and he, what he did is he took a, um, some of the NDI um, apps that are available, and he's able to monitor all of his sources now right through his cable cast system. He can see every camera every device in his entire system right on his cable cast system. And that's all available 
to ingest and pass on through. Hey, boys, I saw you might have a quick question. Uh, just quickly, I want to check. Yeah, we're up on uh, Screenweave, and I think we're working on our white label apps right now. Uh, what was the third one you said that was going to be added? Fire Stick. Fire That's Stick. Any idea what timeline on that? Uh, I was told end of the year. I think we're kind of uh, it's it's in process. That's all I can tell you. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we haven't made any public announcement yet. I mean, so far everything's working great, but we're gonna we're gonna strategically uh, send the press release out around budget time. So <laughs> I think the working great so far. Thank you. I think that's a really neat um, you know opportunity. Some of the customers I've been talking with have said they've. They've really been able to utilize that effectively. And um, I think that's where we're all headed, honestly. Okay. Thank you, 